Welcome to TNT Outdoors. If you were on death row and you got to choose your last meal, what would it be? Well, mine would definitely be chicken fried deer steaks, homemade mashed potatoes, and cornbread. And that's what we're gonna make today. All right, so we've got some deer steaks in here. And once they thaw out, I like to put them in a Ziploc bag, put a little milk in there, and let them soak for about 30 minutes, maybe an hour or so. And that should help remove some of the gaminess that might be in the meat and make it taste really good. So I've already done that, I've already drained off all the milk, and what we've just got is our deer steaks here. Now these are not pre-tenderized deer steaks. Sometimes if you take them to a processor, you can get tenderized deer steaks. Or if you process yourself, maybe you have a tenderizer, and before you freeze it, you know, you've already tenderized the steaks. Well, these weren't done that way, so we've just got the steaks. And so what I'm gonna do is tenderize them first. Oh, I almost forgot the most important step the marinating process. The marination process is extremely important in this entire meal. And I'm not talking about the meat, I'm talking about the cook. You gotta marinate the cook. Cheers. All right, where was I? The steaks. <laughs> All right, so we've got some cut up deer steaks here. We're gonna do a couple of things. To them. First of all, these are actually kind of big, so what we are going to do is actually trim them up just a little bit. Cut off some of this, a little bit of the fat, there's not too much fat on there, we'll cut a little bit of that off. We'll trim these down just a little bit. Alright, I got my tenderizer here. A lot of you have probably tenderized meat before. <laughs> and if you got lighter color cabinets or light floors like we do here, you know, it may look like a crime scene when you're done. So, for my wife's sake, I don't beat the meat with my tenderizer. What I like to do is just get in there and just apply a little bit of pressure. You know, just pressurize it down. Tenderize it like that. You know, just get it nice and good. You know, I don't beat on it. You know, you go slamming like this, blood could go everywhere. So, this is how I tenderize it. I don't bang on it. Just a little bit of pressure on the tenderizer and that'll break up the meat. Tenderize it nice and good. Perfect. Set that one over there. Move on to the next one. Trim some of the, if there's any of that fat on, you can just kind of trim it off as you go as you want. Like so. Chicken fried deer steaks, in my opinion, are actually the best way to cook them. Not the only way, it's good a lot of other ways. But chicken fried, ooh, that's so good. And quite frankly, I thought everybody knew. I just thought that was a thing every hunter did. But I was actually watching a video the other day by one of my favorite other YouTube channels. Um, it was actually Hillbilly Hard YouTube channel. And he's had some really cool videos of several deer he's harvested this season. And the other day he posted a cooking video where he stir fried some venison uh, with some broccoli and corn and some stuff. And man, that looked really good. And I commented on the video asking him about chicken fried deer steaks. And he said he'd never heard of it before. Maybe he's pulling my leg a little bit, but I wasn't planning on doing any cooking videos. I'm certainly no chef, but uh, I'm gonna make a video just for you on chicken fried deer steaks. <laughs> and it got me thinking, maybe there are other people out there that have never chicken fried their venison. Well, you're missing out if you haven't. And I'm just gonna warn you because once you try this, it's gonna be so good, you may never want to cook it another way. So, be forewarned. So, Hillbilly Billy Hard, this video is for you. All right, we got our deer steaks all tenderized. It's time for the next step. Now we're just gonna batter them up. You know, ordinarily I would probably do this step while I'm cooking it. I'd have my two bowls here and I'd be battering at the same time I'm frying. But for the video's sake, I'm gonna do a separate step here that occasionally I'll do, where I'm gonna batter it up and put it on a pan here, and let it chill out in the fridge while I'm cooking the other items. So first things first, we need some flour. Ordinary white flour. Flour in this one, so there's a good amount of flour in there, and then I'm going to flour the pan just a little bit 
what we're going to be setting the steaks. We're going to move our flour around a little bit. We're going to put a few eggs in here. I just want a good amount of liquid to get it in too, so I don't know, four or six eggs, something like that for this amount of deer steaks we got here. a little bit of milk in the mixture here. Now, just a little bit. All right, so we've got our deer steaks here, all tenderized. Now what we're gonna do with them is we're just gonna put them in an egg and milk mixture here. And go right down in the, oops, go right down in the, uh, flour with them. I like to make sure I got lots of flour on there. And like I said, ordinarily I'd probably just go right into the frying pan with it like this, but since we're trying to do some other stuff here, we're just going to lay them out on my pan here. Get that down in the mixture. Throw it up in the flour here. Get some flour nice on it. I like to make sure it's nice and coated with flour. Put it on our pan here. Next one. And flour there. Marinade to cook a little more. deer steaks all battered up, laid out my plate here. I'm gonna go put this in the fridge and then we're gonna get started on the next item, the homemade mashed potatoes. Got me five pounds of potatoes here. First of all, we gotta peel them. The most exciting part of the process. Got my trash can down here in front of me, behind the counter here, so we're just gonna peel them right into there. Just like that. Pretty exciting stuff. Got them all peeled up. Now we need to rinse them all off and then we'll cut them up and get them in our pot. We got our potatoes all rinsed off, nice and clean. Got our pot here. Now I like to pre-season the pot before I cook them. First of all, we're going to start off with some garlic powder. Put a good amount of garlic powder in the pan there. Garlic powder. We'll put us a little garlic salt in there. A little garlic salt. I'm gonna put us a little black pepper in there. Now this is an optional ingredient, but I like to put a little bit of dill weed while I'm cooking the potatoes. So we're gonna put a little bit of dill weed in there. It just gives it kind of a nice extra little flavor. It's kind of strong, so I don't put it in after, but I put it in while it's cooking. Deal with it. All right, so we got garlic salt, garlic powder, black pepper, and optional, I like to put a little bit of dill weed. That's all the spices we need. Let's cut up our taters and get them in there. Okay, I just half them, half that half, and just chop them up. Not too small, but not too big. We got our potatoes all cut up. We just need to fill up with water, get it on the stove, bring them to a boil, turn that down a little bit, and just let them cook. 
until they get nice and soft and ready to mash up. Here we go. All right, let's fire them up. Nice and hot. Let me get them to a boil. And once they start boiling, we'll turn it down a little bit to just a, a little bit above a simmer to almost a boil until they get nice and soft. Not mushy, but nice and soft. Put a sardette on there. Let those get cooking. And while the potatoes are cooking, let's make us our cornbread. I like to use this Jiffy corn muffin mix. And they got directions on it that they call a cornbread Johnny cake. I just pretty much follow those directions. There's one additional secret ingredient. I'll show you. So we'll just kind of open this up here. I'm gonna do four of these boxes for the size of my pan here. So I'll start off by pouring those in. Number four. Now according to the box, for each one of these packages, we need one egg and one third cup of milk. So that's going to be four eggs and one and one third cups of milk. Here we go. Well, actually, while we're doing this, let's go ahead and preheat our oven to 400. Preheat to 400. And we're going to need four eggs. Secret ingredient. I call it the little extra love that makes it good. Just a little bit of sugar. I like this Florida Crystals raw cane sugar here. Tastes pretty good. So we're gonna add a little bit of sugar. A little extra love in the cornbread. A little more. More love. Okay, so it ends up being kind of a cornbread cake. But it's good. We're just gonna mix her up here. We got our cornbread all mixed up, and now just need to grease the pan. I like to grease it with Crisco, all vegetable shortening. So I just like to take a little bit here, and then just rub around the pan here. Grease that pan all up, size. All right, now we're just gonna pour our cornbread, pretty simple, into the pan here. Sounds like our oven's all preheated. Now we just need to put our cornbread in the oven. It says for 16 to 20 minutes, with this amount of cornbread batter, probably actually gonna take more like 25 minutes, has usually been my experience. So we'll put it in for 20 and we'll check it and I'll probably have to put it in about five more minutes. It'll be ready to go. Let's get it in the oven. Need a little more marinade. Cheers. Ah, our potatoes are still boiling out there and while they're not quite finished, I'm gonna go ahead and get our bowl ready to mash them up in. Now we're making five pounds of potatoes today in the mashed potatoes. I use about one and a half to two sticks of salted butter per five pounds of potatoes for my mashed potatoes. We'll probably use two sticks today. <laughs> Nice and buttery. Okay, get us a couple of good chunks for the bottom of our bowl here. There we go, and that's almost one stick of butter right there. So we got us a little bit of butter in there. We'll put a little bit of just milk in there, whatever kind you like. Uh, I find 2% or whole milk, 
for me, tastes better than mashed potatoes. So we'll just put us a little bit of milk in there to get started. And then just a little bit more garlic salt. A little bit more garlic powder. And a little bit of pepper. And you kind of do this to taste, you know, how much pepper and salt and garlic your family likes, or you like, season it to taste. So we got our butter, a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of milk, ready to accept the potatoes once they're done cooking and strained off. Let's go. Okay, well our potatoes are pretty much done. Now I can tell just by running through the spoon here through them, just by the way it feels that they're done. They kind of feel that soft, but not too mushy. You know, that's from experience. But what you want, if you were to take you one and get it with a fork, see how it kind of, kind of mashes up. That's right, they're just done. You don't want to cook them more than this too much because they'll get too soggy. And you don't want them hard where when you poke into them, it doesn't mash, it's just breaking apart. You, know, you want them nice and soft to where it looks like they're about ready to mash. See that? And they're done. So now we need to strain the water off, get them in our bowl for mixing. Here we go. All right, we strained off the water. Let's get them in our pan here. We're gonna add some more butter in there. Open up our second stick here. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Have to put it in there, let it melt down a little bit. While we're getting the seasons and everything in there. Just a little bit in there. All right, now I'm just gonna put a little bit more garlic powder, garlic salt, and black pepper. Again, you kinda have to do this to taste. How much salt and pepper and stuff your family likes. Put our butter in there, we're gonna put a little more milk in. How much milk you wanna put in depends on how runny you like your mashed potatoes. I don't usually like them too runny, just nice and soft, nice and smooth. But it's gonna look a little runny, it's gonna look like a lot of liquid in there when you first put that milk in. It's gonna to have to mix up. Got our hand mixer here, we're just gonna mix them up. important steps in the mashed potatoes is definitely the taste test. You gotta make sure you got the seasoning and the butter and the milk just right. Let's try it out. Scoop a little bit here. Mmm. That's good. I think it's just right. And now since we got to finish up our deer steaks, I'm gonna cover up these potatoes, keep them nice and warm. A little bit of tin foil. layers, mix it nice and thick, set these aside, we're actually ready to start frying our deer steaks now. For the frying process I actually like to use Crisco, I believe it tastes the best. You can use peanut oil or whatever kind of oil you prefer to cook with. I like Crisco when it comes to deer steaks. Alright, so we want to get up Crisco. And we want to put just enough in here to where when it melts down, the deer steaks will not be fully submerged in the oil. About halfway, a little bit more up on our steaks. So it doesn't take a whole lot, but we just want to scoop us out some. Get it in there. It's easier to add more than it is to take some out. So let's put a little bit more in there. Now we want to turn our heat on, let that start melting down. While that's melting, gotta marinate some more. All right, well we, not, we want our oil to be nice and hot. Not too hot, but I like to test it. Drop a little bit of something in there, make sure it's frying. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Yep, it's ready to go. So let's put our steaks on. And again, usually I go straight from the egg milk mixture into my flour, right into the fire pan. This is an extra step I don't always do put it in this pan, but for the sake of the video, I thought it might be easier. Put these 
down in there. Put these steaks right down in that oil there. Let them start frying up. Alright, now it's not going to take that long, really just a few minutes aside, and they'll be ready. It's looking pretty good. It should be a nice golden brown when they're done on the side, ready to flip. I got the heat set on a little bit above medium, about three quarters of the way to high. So you don't want it all the way on high, but good medium to high heat, enough to fry them up here. While we're waiting, there it is. Go ahead and flip a couple of these over. Oh yeah, see that's looking good. Yeah, nice golden brown there. When I'm doing these, I usually get two, maybe three panfuls out of a pan before I feel like the oil doesn't taste as good. So a lot of times what I'll have to do is have a second pan and I'll switch and put a new brand new oil in and get that second pan going. Got me a plate off of right here, a little bit of a paper towel. I just pull them off. Set them on this paper towel on the plate. All right, we'll set those aside and put a lid on them. Keep them warm. Throw our next batch in here. While we wait, we marinate. Now this oil is looking pretty dirty, you know, a little burnt out. I probably would ordinarily go ahead and switch for another pan of oil. I only got two more steaks here, so we'll just throw these in here. All right, everybody at home, say it with me. While we wait, we marinate. Oh, that's good. All right, well, everything's ready. Now for the best part, plating up and eating. Let's start off and get us some of this cornbread here. Get us some mashed potatoes. They turned out a little runnier than I usually make them, but they're still good. Probably went a little heavy on the milk this time, but that's all right. I think my wife likes them better that way, so she'll be happy. And now, a little piece of the resistance. The chicken fried deer steaks. The best way to cook venison there is. I would say arguably, but I don't think it's arguable. This is the best. If you hadn't tried it, please try it. It's awesome. All right, let's pick us out a good one here. Yeah. Well, that's just one. I think we might need two. Let's pick us out a little small one here. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's cut into that and see what it looks like. Ooh, here we go. Oh yeah, that looks good. Look at that thing. Oh yeah. Yummy. Take a little bit. Mmm. 
うんうんうんうんありがとうございますうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんうんう Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please consider hitting the like button and be sure to subscribe for more TNT Outdoors exclusive content.